to kickstart us off, let's talk about the property market cycle. So, as you may well be aware, and if not, you will be aware after we finish this, uh, the property market has various cycles that it goes through. And what we found in our 23 years of experience is that when sales are going really well, rentals tend, or they have in the past, they tend to slow down. And then what happens over a period of time, it's like, like a bicycle where you've got two pedals. And so over a period of time, these cycles change. And so rents go up and then the property sales cycle slows down. And what's really weird about where we are right now is obviously uh, the property sales are absolutely flying out the door, but also property rentals are flying out the door as well. So you have to wonder where are we on this on this cycle. So in the past, you have property prices for sales slowing down. Um, so that's coming down. And then you've got rentals, which is over here. And that's absolutely flying. So this is where we're at with this stage of equilibrium. And it continually goes round in cycles. So like, where are we right now with it? And what's going to happen in the next 10 years with regards to sales and with uh, rentals? Now, we're going to talk about that fairly soon, but obviously no one's really got an idea. No one's got a crystal ball. There's lots of people who pretend they know what they're talking about. And usually they work for people like the Financial Times, as um, uh, I get a lot of uh, a grief for that. But they work as professionals writing for things like Money Week and The Motley Fool and The Financial Times and The Daily Express Money Section and The Sun Money Section and all this stuff, right? And I would have to ask you the question, if they're so good at writing that and understanding where the markets are going to be in 10 years' time, why are they still having to work for a job and get paid an income? You know, the most expensive form of taxable income is income tax. Uh, why are you still working a job like that? Why are you not self-employed? And I get there might be contractors and, and that kind of thing as well, but they're still having to exchange time for money uh, and work for somebody else effectively with deadlines and bosses and all the, all the extra things that come with that. So... All these people who claim to have an idea as to where we're going to be in 10 years' time, uh, where we're, you know, what's going to happen next in the property market cycle, they haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. We just know from experience that when we call it, we tend to be more or less accurate, more or less. And we tend to uh, read between the lines and the um, conclusions that we come to more or less end up being accurate. And so we've done all right with that. But of course, past performance isn't equal to future performance. We're just making it up as we go along, just like everybody else, except we admit it. And the guys working for Financial Times don't. They, they're still experts because they still have to be employed tomorrow and the next day and the next day. My money comes from my tra track record on my decision making. Uh, and so it's not the end user or people buying newspapers that determine how much money I make. My money comes from the decisions that I've made and how correct they are. And so far, we've, we seem to have done all right. And touch wood, we will continue to do all right with that. But right now in the property market, um, in terms of where we are in a cycle, you've got sales absolutely flying out the door and you've got rentals absolutely flying out the door. And so this section is really for you to understand that that will not always be like that. Just as, you know, there's a selection of property investors right now who believe that interest rates will always be quarter percent or 0.1% as they are now or there'll be less than 3%. And obviously, I'm not that old, but I, you know, I remember the days of having 6% interest rates. I don't remember having 15, 16, and 17% interest rates. I'm not that old. But that was, you know, that was a, a an effect that was in place at a particular point in time. It's like society. We think society is this stable mechanism that's been around for hundreds of thousands of years, and it hasn't. Society has been around for, in its current situation for about 10 years and before that that was society and that was 10 years and before that that was 10 years and you know we talk about global warming you go back 14,000 years ago back to the younger dryas event uh, global warming was it was frozen uh, and then the younger dryas came which was a big meteor and it, it changed everything you know over the next couple of years it can change like that and that's exactly the same with where we are in our society. It can change just like that. And the property cycles can change. The interest rates can change. And so I think that regardless of the property cycle, you have to put yourself into a position so that if interest rates rise, you are protected somewhat with that. So what's the hedge against interest rates? Well, I think, you know, in the past, it's been things like gold, stamps, art, 
Um, now it's things like cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin and Dogecoin and Sheeb and Ethereum and Litecoin and all the other ones. That is a potential hedge. But one of the biggest hedges that you can have against interest rate rises is going to be paying down some debt. There's no question about that. If you've got a million pounds of debt and interest rates are 1% versus interest rates being 10%, that's a big difference. One of them's like £10,000 and one of them's £100,000. There's a big difference between those numbers. And that difference can be the thing that's going to make you survive or fail uh, with the coming interest rate rises. Now, in this property market cycle, obviously uh, inflation is running away at the moment and, and people are saying it's transitory inflation. This is down to the pandemic that we've had. I absolutely don't believe that. Transitory inflation, does that mean uh, inflation will slow back down to 1% or 2%? Now, it, it depends on, on their definition, because I think the definition that they're saying is that not only will inflation come back down from 6% down to 1%, it will actually bring prices back to what they were pre-pandemic. That's not what's happening here, folks. This is a big misnomer that people don't understand about inflation. That's got a lot to do with where we are in the current property market cycle. If inflation is transitory, and it's at 6% now, and it lasts for two years, and then it comes down to 1%, you still had a 12% increase. And it's not quite 12%, it's slightly more because it's compounded over a number of years. You've still got an increase in 12 or 13%. It doesn't mean that prices have gone back down to pre-inflation. You would need deflation to make that happen. And this is the bit when people are saying, oh, inflation's transitory, there's nothing to worry about. And people are going, yeah, okay, I, I can take that. Inflation is transitory. I, I don't have to worry. Prices will come back down. That's not what we're on about. And, and people don't get this because the lack of financial education in our school system prevents people actually understanding how all this stuff works. They literally haven't got a clue. I remember watching a BBC news item a couple of years ago, 10 years ago, when inflation was 3%. And they're going, oh, inflation's dropped from 3% down to 1%. Have you noticed prices dropping in your supermarket? That's not what inflation does. If inflation is 1%, prices are still increasing by 1%. But a drop from 3% down to 1%, yeah, that's a drop of 2%. But it's still inflation at 1%. And this is the bit that people don't understand. And so when we're talking about where are we with this current property market and this property cycle, you've got to have to take inflation into account. You're going to have to take interest rate rises into account. And I reckon as early as next month, we might have a quarter point interest rate rise. And is that worrying? Absolutely. Have rents gone up to cover some of that? Absolutely. The, there's a big difference right now between what Rightmove and Zoopla are saying rents are. They're saying rents have gone up, um, I think, 6.4%, but it depends on who you listen to. The ONS, which is the Office for National Statistics, they've come out and gone, oh, no, 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 that's wrong. Inflation on rents is only 1.6%, I think they said. You're crazy. But why do you think nobody uh, believes or trusts a word that the ONS even comes out with? There is absolutely no way on this earth has inflation for rentals stuck at one point something percent. It's way, way, way past that. I was looking on Twitter and people going, my rent's gone up 10%. We just put someone's rent up 10% because uh, it's uh, HMO and so our gas prices have gone up and so we're having to cover some extra costs. But we just put their rents up 10%. Now, it's not a huge amount. You know, if they're paying £400, it's an extra 40 quid. It's not a massive amount. And if uh, hopefully they get pay rises, which they have done because uh, minimum wage has gone up, they've got enough to cover that. But it, it gets passed on down the line. But your job as a, an investor and as a property investor is to protect the work that you've already done. And the way that you do that is by making sure that you understand what's going to happen when inflation hits, which it's already hitting, and what then the knock-on effect is for when interest rates come in and what the difference is that going to make in your portfolio with your tenants and that kind of thing.